All right, this is a screencast on the first of Tennyson's poems that we're going to be looking at, which is The Lady of Shalott. This poem has um, a lot of significance to me. Um, I was like a really weird kid, and I really loved uh, this poem when I was a kid. I used to pretend to be the Lady of Shalott. Um, and I'll tell more about that in just a little bit. But let's start with the Lady of Shalott. On either side, the river lie long fields of barley and of rye that clothe the wall and meet the sky. And through the field, uh, the road runs by to many towered Camelot. And up and down, the people go, gazing where the lilies blow, round an island there below the island of Shalott. Willows whiten, aspens quiver, little breezes dusk and shiver. Through the wave that runs forever by the island in the river flowing down to Camelot, four gray walls and four gray towers overlook a space of flowers and the silent island bowers, the Lady of Shalott. By the margin, willow veiled, slide the heavy barges trail by slow horses and unhailed, the shallop flitteth silken sailed, skimming down to Camelot. But who hath seen her wave her hand, or at the casement seen her stand, or is she known? Known in all the land, the Lady of Shalott. Only reapers reaping early in among the bearded barley hear a song that echoes cheerily from the river, winding clearly down to towered Camelot. And by the moon, the reaper weary, piling sheaves in uplands airy, listening the hiccup, sorry, whispers, tis the fairy Lady of Shalott. So the poem begins in this first part with a description of a river and a road that runs down to, to Camelot, which you know is the uh, the home of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table, that kind of thing. And so this, there's a lot of traffic on this road like all the time. People in town travel back and forth down this road. Um, and on this road, or off this road, just uh, slightly, uh, there is a little island. Um, and on that island is a little a uh, little castle, a little small castle, four gray walls, four gray towers, and there's flowers all around it. It's a very pretty little place. There's lots of plants um, on there, lilies and aspens and willow trees and all that kind of stuff. And on that island, in that tower, there is a woman who is kind of held captive there. She's in prison there uh, in that four gray wall, four gray tower um, edifice. Um, and so all these people are always walking by and they've heard rumors that this woman is, is there, but they don't have never seen her. They've never seen her uh, at the window. They've never seen her uh, wave her hand. The only way that anyone knows that she's even there is that they hear her. Um, they hear her singing. Um, and so like and only the people that hear her singing are the people that are out uh, out working consistently like around the place. The reapers who are harvesting barley that grows on the road, they can hear her singing uh, and and they think she's a fairy, but they think she doesn't really exist, so that she's just a fairy person. Okay, so there she weaves by night and day a magic web with colors gay. She has heard a whisper say a curse is on her if she stay to look down to Camelot. She knows not what the curse may be, and so she weaveth steadily, and little other care hath she, the Lady of Shalott. And moving through a mirror clear that hangs before her all the year, shadows of the world appear. There she sees the highway near winding down near winding down to Camelot. There the river eddy whirls, and there the surly village churls and the red cloaks of the market girls pass onward from Shalott. Sometimes a troop of damsels glad, an abbot on an ambling pad, sometimes a curly shepherd lad or long haired page in crimson clad goes by to towered Camelot, and sometimes through the mirror blue the knights come riding two and two. She hath no loyal knight and true, the Lady of Shalott. But in her web she still delights to weave the mirror's magic sights, for often through the silent nights a funeral with plumes and lights and music went down to Camelot. Or when the moon was overhead, it came two young lovers lately wed. I am half sick of shadows, said the Lady of Shalott. So 
people don't know that she's there, but she does exist. And, and she spends her day, night and day, weaving a, a magic web, a colorful magic web. Um, she has heard a voice whisper that if she stops or stays her weaving, that a curse will befall her if she stops what she's doing. And so she doesn't know what it is. She doesn't know what the curse is, but... It doesn't matter. She just concentrates night and day on continuing to weave uh, and never lifting her eyes uh, from that task. But as she weaves, um, she has a mirror b hanging before her. And this is a common practice for weavers. They would use mirrors because you weave actually on the back side um, of, the, of the loom. And then you would use a mirror to the front side so you could see kind of like how your weaving was ending up. Um, and so in this mirror, she's able to actually see out of a window um, and sees the road uh, to Camelot. She sees shadows of the world outside. Um, and so she's able to see like everything that's happening in the world outside the real world um, it, here in her little illusioned world that she's living in she can see the outside world through this window and so she sees all the people passing day by day like back and forth uh, damsels uh, an abbot uh, as a church official a shepherd a page dressed in crimson uh, she sometimes sees these knights riding back and forth, the market girls. Um, and in that, she's weaving those sights that she's seeing in this magic web that she is creating. Um, but she herself doesn't have someone to rescue her. She hath no loyal knight and true. Um, and she's frustrated because she's tired of living her life this way in shadows instead of living out in the real world, but she doesn't know how to bring that to an end because she can't stop the weaving. A bow shot from her bower eaves, he rode between the barley sheaves. The sun came dazzling through the leaves and flamed upon the brazen greaves of bold Sir Lancelot, a red cross knight forever kneeled to a lady in his shield that sparkled on the yellow field beside remote Shalott. The jimmy bridle glittered free like to some branch of stars we see hung in the golden galaxy. The bridle bells rang merrily as he rode down to Camelot, and from his blazoned baldric slung a mighty silver bugle hung, and as he rode his armor rung beside remote shallot all in the blue and clouded weather thick jeweled shone the saddle leather the helmet and the helmet feather burned like a one burning flame together as he rode down to camelot as often through this purple night below the starry clusters bright some bearded meteor trailing light moves over still shallot his broad clear brow and sunlight glowed or burnished hooves his war horse trode from underneath his helmet flowed his coal black curls as on he rode as he rode down to camelot from the bank and from the mirror the river he flashed into the crystal mirror tira lira by the river sang sir lancelot she left the web, she left the loom, she made it three paces through the room. She saw the water lily bloom and saw the helmet and the plume. She looked down to Camelot. Out flew the web and floated wide. The mirror cracked from side to side. The curse has come upon me cried the lady of shallot so one day she's she's doing her normal weaving weaving her her web and he rides into the mirror sir lancelot and everything about him is is not shadow right we get like four stanzas of a description colorful description of this man on this horse and he's so bright and shiny and everything is sparkling and gems are glittering and uh his bugle and his bells on the bridle they're making noise and his armor is ringing out as he gallops along beside this island and um it is it is this sight that causes her to just completely 
stop what she is doing um, and stop weaving her web. And so that's kind of interesting. She's seen other knights go riding by all the time. It's like a common thing. But here is this Lancelot. He's our hero of King Arthur stories. He was famous for his illicit affair with the beautiful queen Guinevere. Um, here he is in all his color, dazzling, sparkling, um, gorgeous, you know, in, in sight. And these, these rich visual details that Tennyson is providing for us. And it's not the sight of him uh, that causes her to stop. It's his song. She hears him sing a song. Uh, and she stops what she is. She stops what she is doing. And um, so, and then obviously, immediately, this curse starts to, uh, this curse starts to come upon her. The web floats out of the, of the window, the mirror cracks from side to side, and the Lady of Shalott is, is terrified because, you know, like, this is it for her, right? In the stormy east wind straining, the pale yellow woods were waning, the broad stream in his banks complaining, heavily the low sky raining, over towered Camelot. Down she came and found a boat, beneath a willow left afloat, and round about the prow she rode the Lady of Shalott, and down the river's dim expanse, like some bold seer in a trance, seeing all his own mischance, with a glassy countenance, did she look to Camelot. And at the closing of the day, she loosed the chain, and down she lay. The broad stream bore her far away, the Lady of Shalott, lying robed in snowy white that flew, loosely flew to left and right. The leaves upon her falling light through the noises of the night, she floated down to Camelot. And as the boat head wound along the willowy hills and fields among, they heard her singing her last song, the Lady of Shalott, heard a carol, mournful, holy, chanted loudly, chanted lowly till her blood was frozen slowly and her eyes were dark and holy turned to towered Camelot for ere she reached upon the tide the first house by the water side singing in her song she died the lady of Shalott under tower and balcony by garden wall and gallery a gleaming shape she floated by dead pale between the houses high silent into camelot out upon the wharfs they came knight and burgher lord and dame and round the prow they read her name the lady of shalott who is this and what is here and in the lighted palace near died the sound of royal cheer and and they crossed themselves for fear all the nights at Camelot. But Lancelot mused a little space. He said, she has a lovely face. God in his mercy lend her grace, the Lady of Shalott. So she goes down at the bottom of her tower, and the whole world is like coming, crashing to an end, right? It's thundering, it's storming outside, it's cold, it's winter time, uh, so it's already, it's like freezing out there. She descends from the tower, she finds a boat, she writes her name beneath the boat, the Lady of Shalott, she lies down uh, into the boat um, and sets it loose and the stream carries her to the place that she's only seen in her mirror it's the, the shadows that she's seen of this this place and not the the reality of it so she's literally wearing white she's floating down this water it's freezing outside she is singing her death song her blood is free is freezing her eyes are darkening and she dies and when her boat sails silently into Camelot everybody comes out and is like you know who is this woman and, you know this is the lady of Shalott that we've heard about all this time she's been captured and held up in that tower this whole time and no one even knew she existed and they read her name on the boat on the bow of the ship or the boat and they cross themselves for fear and Sir Lancelot lot which is the sole reason that she you know left this shadow world in the first place is he comes out and he's like oh she's got a pretty face you know may she go with grace god have mercy on her you know on her soul um it's a very interesting concept 
um, about, you know, the isolation and, and, and her living in the half world or the shadow world um, as opposed to living in the real world. And there's been a lot of, like, critics that talk about, like, this is a, about art, like, living uh, outside of, like, the mainstream and, and you got to take a chance sometimes with life and love and all that kind of stuff. You know, here she was caught up in, in this in this fake world that she was living in uh, when, when the real world, the, the beautiful world of the outside was just right beyond her reach. Um, so this is a, an interesting um, poem. I used to pretend to be her. I would lay down in a boat on a, we had a little pond and I'd float out into the middle with no oars. I would float out into the middle of our little pond and my dad would have to come out and rescue me because I wouldn't be able to get back to the, to the shore. Yeah, I was a weird kid. So that's the Lady of Shalott.